Final Fantasy XIV is one of the biggest MMOs in the genre, sporting an ever-faithful community, constant development, extensive gameplay, and an immersive atmosphere. I never touched this game. Like, n not at all. Okay, maybe, like, once, but I didn't talk about it. How dare you! Honestly, I'm not a fan of JRPGs, really, but I decided that if I wanted to have an honest opinion about the game, I should actually put some time into it to do it some justice. Final Fantasy XIV does not disappoint. Legitimately. I laughed so many damn times playing through this opening quest series and a couple of dungeons that I actually forgot I was playing a game. There is a unique and charming effect to Final Fantasy XIV that I didn't really notice until I logged in and that's what I want to share with you today. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and listen to find out if Final Fantasy 14 is the greatest MMO that I never played. Also big shout out to my sponsors of this channel. I am ever grateful for your support of me becoming a full-time content creator. If you are interested in joining and becoming a part of the caffeinated cult, I got to come up with a better name. Click on the link down in the description. Anyway, Let's get into it. Logging into Final Fantasy for the first time, I am greeted with the most important screen of any MMO or an ARPG or any combination thereof, the character select screen. I have a total of six races that I am given. Now, bear with me, I'm gonna do my best. Granny, everybody. He's about to do something stupid. You have the Higher, Elizen, Lalafell, Mkode, Rodigan, and Ara, which I probably just ruined this entire video for anyone who knows how to pronounce those correctly. There's also the Hrothgar and Viera, which seem to be tied to specific expansions or upgraded points during the game, but for the free trial, I have these initial six. The Higher seem like the human-esque race where the Elizen honestly just looks like fancy elves. It's like they basically raise their nose up to you whenever you, they see you drinking non-caffeinated coffee. The Lala fell. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. This sends me for a trip like every time. They are these cherub little characters, but they look like children despite them actually being full grown adults. I, I, <laughs> I only know this because last year when I took a stab at Final Fantasy 14, there was a character and all I remember his name is Papa Meow who plays a role in the main story quest in Gridania, is like a learned aged scholar, but he looks like he also goes wee on a tire swing. <laughs> then there's the Mkode, which are, well, they appear to be cat people, a healthy mix of human and feline. I, I suppose we really shouldn't ask if they use a toilet or a litter box, but if you want to get some good anime feels, this might be the way to go for you. Then we have the Rodigan, which are these massive beef capes. Like, good God, look at the size of this dude's biceps. But I guarantee you they can become like a healer or a mage. You got all them muscles and you you aren't swinging an axe? Okay. It's like someone was told something incorrectly on career day. Then we have the Ara, which honestly looks like Dante from Devil May Cry had a child with a demon from Supernatural and then sent him to a rave. Anyway, the Hrothgar actually seemed like cat people. It's But maybe it's, it's more honest to say that they're lion people? I mean, roar, baby. Then Viera, which immediately looking would be my daughter's whole identity here in this game. They have bunny ears. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. <clears throat> well, my basic boy band self picks up the higher or well, the human. And I have two choices of what clan I am a part of. It seems like it changes my aesthetics a little bit and adjusts my story, perhaps. But where I begin at like the difference between a Highlander and a Midlander changes the initial starting zone, maybe? I don't know. Well, this is where the fun part comes in, because holy hell of customization of your character. It is ridiculous. This takes RP to an absolute max with everything from height and muscle tone, eye color, voice lines, face paint, and more. Literally, you can customize to your heart's content. Any way that you want to be in this game, which is pretty damn cool. With no idea of what class I'm going to play, I try to make out my best interpretation of myself. And we went full handlebar mustache, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to go and it seems that I can choose my birth date and what deity we worship. This might affect something in game. Uh, the, I'm thinking that this could be very similar to like Guild Wars 2 where you make story choices in the character creation and it affects you down the line. Now comes the picking of the class. There are two categories, Disciples of War and Disciples of Magic. Typically, when I get into a new game, I tend to play the melee classes, getting up close and personal with all that this game has to offer. Last time, I chose a Lancer as my class, and while it was cool, I don't know if I paid enough attention to give it the full love it deserves. Also, I am cycling through these classes, and it seems that the one that I am choosing changes the starting city that I am at. Limsa, Lominsa, Gridania, which I do have experience in, and Ulda, which all three seem interesting, but Limsa 
Thames that has pirates, so... I'll fit right in with my thigh-high boots and my mustache. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, I decided that the Marauder is the way to go because basically it looks like a warrior. Oh wait, they evolve into a warrior down the line. Interesting. It's like a more fashionable Pokemon game right here, but it seems like the classes are locked behind a specific role, meaning that the warrior is always going to be the tank or Marauder, whereas the Lancer and the Dragoon, which it evolves into, will always be melee DPS. I believe that is correct, which makes it even more interesting, especially down the line when you are getting into grouped content. But it seems like I can play longer down the road and eventually unlock all these classes on a single character. So I can have the caffeinated dad become a Lancer or an Arcanist or if I spend more time in this game. This is actually such a damn cool feature because it essentially removes the needs for alts unless you want to have a different looking race. I actually really can appreciate this here. I am now met with the first cutscene and my Mr. Clean lookalike is being assaulted with melodic music and someone telling me to hear and feel which my Marauder just looks generally displeased. Well he gets a full on single turn solar beam and then gets an armor upgrade and summons an axe out of thin air and against what apparently is a simple guy in a robe. Actually, I feel like I've seen him before. I'm still rocking the original leather, but now I'm on a boat and it seems like I'm sailing somewhere, but this nice chap Brennan is asking me questions and chit-chatting. And honestly, there's a ton of reading thus far and I'm only five minutes into the game. I hope it isn't like this for the entire game. <laughs> Well, so Captain Crunch shows up and shoots his oops all berries at our ships. While I'm trying to read all these damn texts, we get yelled at to go downstairs and to talk some more, I guess. And good gracious, is that woman topless? This is not a PG-13 game. My Christian eyes. Well, we survived the pirate attack and my character swag walks to see Limsa Luminsa for the first time. It seems like this whole pirate ship theme capital is like right on a rocky cliff face, which is, is pretty well done, honestly. Despite the jokes, I am cracking up. It gives such a good edge on the story and a lot more information of the back of who I am and what I am doing here. Which going into Final Fantasy, I was aware that there was a lot of reading before and that it is more of a story driven style of MMO. So actually having the story of why the heck I am doing anything and my reasonings for it, it allows for an extra level of depth. Even though I joke about the reading, this is a nice feature. Well, the ship docks and I RP walk out as Brennan looks at me at the same way that I look at KFC at two in the morning and then tells me it's time for him to leave. He hands me something. I don't know. There's nothing in his hand or mine. I'm cracking up to this point because my character is so damn serious, but he also looks like he just got back from the dress up corner with a choker, a necklace and earring. <laughs> Who designed this character? Cool opening cinematic and a good side of everything enjoying the view here. And then this giant yellow brick house ruins my piece. Well, here we are looking at the first sense of the UI. And it seems fairly basic, in my opinion. Chat box, action bars, health and mana pools, experience bar, mini menu, the map. Okay, I can be down for this. Straight up to the point, which is nice. So I'm trying to get used to walking around, uh, but this big angry school bus is telling me that I am dumb and I have to read what they are saying in an old English accent. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm like looking at this and it's like, hello, mate. That's what I feel like they sound like. Well, I'm really trying to take this serious here, folks, but I'm, I'm laughing my ass off at this point. This is so funny. Well, we get our first quest, which pops up in the top left, coming to Limsa Luminsa, main scenario quest. It appears that off to the right, there are some dialogue boxes showing us what our duty list is. And I interpret this as my questing for my use quest log. Well, I got to talk some more to get to an elevator lift to the drowning wench to talk to Balderon. Throughout this journey in Final Fantasy, Galactic has been waiting and conversating for different pieces of advice to really help me understand this game better. Galactic has been imploring me to try Final Fantasy and give it an honest go for a very long time. He's also been a very longtime supporter of the channel. So of course I couldn't play his favorite game without actually including him. In. And basically his character just flies around and stalks me this entire time. Well, we get to the Drowning Wench and Baldurin has a do-rag and he looks identical to Brennan from the boat. Maybe they were brothers. Well, he's got an English accent far worse than any of the other ones I've seen this far. <laughs> I get more invisible items handed to me and then a whole cohort of angry bananas show up because they think I was responsible for the pirate attack. Now I'm just going to say this, but why doesn't anyone button up their shirts in this game. Like we really are rocking that deep V from 2015, aren't we? Well, our old English chap covers for us and then he rolls a nat 20 for persuasion to get the banana bunch to sit down and have a drink. That was a weird ass line. Like, damn, he's pretty good. Well, it seems like there have been some kidnappings and pirate attacks, which is a bit odd because I thought I was a pirate, but 
they're just other bad pirates? Well, I go to explore everything here in the main city of Limsa Lominsa. I was advised to focus on doing a main scenario quest, which seems like it should be my main focus throughout my playthrough, but I also get a suggestion to head over to the Marauders Guild and then see the market as well as attuning to Etherite. If I remember correctly, the Etherite is like the main teleport system network here within this game, which is nice for fast travel to a bunch of different places. I do think a good portion of them take gill, which is the in-game currency, the money in this game. But for some reason, teleporting straight to them is like super damn expensive. Why the hell is that? Well, another angry banana comes to tell me what I already know about the other right, but damn, this dude's DV just got much lower. It's so low compared to everyone else's. And I finally joined the public instance of the main city, and there are tons of people here. I have this little herb next to my character's name, and I've seen this before. This means I'm a sprout, which is nice because it shows other players that uh, I might be new, which is a good thing, I, I think. Or it might make me look like a complete noob. I have no idea. But I love the amount of people playing and wandering around. It's just great health for the game, I believe. I mean, if I was a new player coming in and I saw all of this, I would say, you know what? Damn, this game is, is popping. There's a lot of players here. Which actually makes me even happier about the state of the game because I haven't heard much from Final Fantasy XIV recently. Their Dawn Trail release, which is happening uh, supposedly happening later this year. So I believe they're in kind of a lull for the current moment, but seeing all these people, it's it's pretty good. Galactic shows up on his character, a Reaper, which is hilarious because his character looks so sweet and innocent, but hey, guess what? I can snatch up your soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with some exploring of the main city hub, I am looking for the Marauders Guild, which I'm guessing is my class specific hall for me because, well, that would make sense. I'm gathering these Aethernet shards, which are allowing me to fast travel all over the city, and I think it's for free. I don't know. They might be taking my money, well, but this is a nice touch. So I get to the Marauders Guild to see what's up, and it appears that it's just a giant weightlifting gym. Like, seriously, all these dudes are jacked. I also have to talk to the Axe Master, which this this guy doesn't have an axe but it's literally just a huge trident of you but but anyway he asked me if i'm ready to join bloody carnage of the marauders guild i get a literal pop-up that says are you ready for carnage this freaking game well i select yes and my guy just goes oh you got it boss the dialogue boxes in this game are freaking sending me <laughs> i get the okay ghost rider flight to talk to our pirate buddy over at the drowning wench but not before i get another quest for the marauder for me to kill some rats lambs and lady Bugs. Turns out all the carnage was just a nine to five job at your local pest control. It seems like I'm not high enough level to jump in and get my next quest for my MSQ. So I take a look at the pest control quest and literally the first effing mob that I fight aggro is a level 12 gobu. Goo, gobu. Goo, 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 I, I don't know. What I didn't pay attention was all these different arrows linking the mobs together. So if I pull one, all of them jump in. Galactic had to come in and swing to save me, but I'm on my way to fight and kill these little rat mobs and all the other things around here alike. While I'm doing this, I get a pop-up that says a fate has been joined. From what I can tell that this is a full-on open world event for Final Fantasy, which just is a basic pop-up event. You do what is asked of you and you get some extra credit amongst other things. Not This is neat and, and not gonna lie, I'm used to this coming from Guild Wars 2, which has open world events that just pop up all the time. So one thing that is absolutely hilarious is how my character runs with the sprint button. Apparently your character, every character gets a sprint button. You can use this off a of cooldown, but my character just runs full effort, cheek to cheek, maximum sprint. And it's just freaking hilarious. Like <laughs> also Galactic takes this moment to show me how cool his mounts are. Like, I don't, I don't know how this dragon is flying, but he's holding a chair and floating. And then he gets onto this, damn wolf and this wolf freaking just flies off and it's just gliding up to heaven explain physics to me they don't they don't actually make sense in this game <laughs> what the hell well apparently every mount can fly every single effing mount like this giant four-legged bull sea dragon yep just gliding around what the actual shit is there? Oh, hey, cool, a T-Rex mount. That bitch can fly too. What the hell is even this game? Well, I level up and now I can go on to Summerford, which now I get a new weapon skill 
called main, which seems to work in conjunction with my heavy strike as a combo. So I use one and it sets up the next skill and so on, but they have a flasher around them to indicate what you should press next at any given moment, which actually is a really nice touch for assisting new players. And I can imagine that would probably help out down the road later when you're on against tougher bosses. So apparently I need to dress the right way to impress this guy here. So I need to get some, well, better gear. But I am also shown new class specific quests, which occur every five levels. Well, while messing around, I figure out how to move my UI and oh, that is going to be my favorite new thing. I love having a free flowing UI in any MMO. Being able to customize it and move it the way that I need to is ugh, I, that's the best, especially when MMOs have tons of action skills and a lot of different things that you can press at any given time. Well, the next part of the quest takes me to the lower part of Lenoska, and I have to grab a quest to cover some fart clouds and some suckers to help me with my level progression. But I need you all to see this goofy ass bird here. Look, it's a wild dodo. <laughs> Look at their faces! Who designed the characters in this game? <laughs> I get a new skill called Berserk that guarantees my next three attacks are critical hits, so I'm able to do some big boy pumping damage, which is cool, but apparently I need to kill these mega crabs, megalo crabs, which is causing problems, which also then spawns this cutscene where Salk shows up and then this older dude, Nedard, comes running full sprint because one of the mega crabs are about to eat his kid. Well, this is a duty pop-up that requires me to be at a party and it level syncs me to make sure that players don't trivialize everything. These crabs are about to eat this foul-mouthed little English kid, but I need some crab cakes in my mustached life. Well, here we go. Well, these little ones are easy, but then this guy here is a level 15 chunker monker, and I, for some reason, am able to slice him down very easily. Well, he calls for more of his friends, and it turns into a full-on crab raid. Once the duty is complete, the kid apologizes and tells a gripping backstory about how his folks died. I probably skipped through all this, actually. I don't need that sadness in my life. Well, I get some gear, enough to present myself to Stale Worm. Stale Worm? Stale Worm. Anyway, he asks me to investigate this grotto, which I think is hilarious, because this guy has known me, like, for, like, five minutes, and he's like, boom, you're good to go. Fight and die for me. Well, I enter this duty, which again is a small personal instance, and I run into this cultured conjurer who is, well, another British lady, but with caddy. And honestly, the way that she approaches me, I think she's trying to seduce me. But, but then a giant oogly boogly comes sprinting at us out of nowhere, and now we're in for a fight. I draw out my axe, and this cat literally pulls out a twig, a twig, a GD twig against a 5,000 pound swamp monster creature thing. Like, what the hell is this? But she she's holding it and she's so damn serious. Well, she actually is a tank and a healer all wrapped into one. And she's keeping me alive, so uh, I'm not going to ask questions. Somehow, I level in the middle of this duty and get Rampart, my duty-specific skill, which reduces incoming damage for a short time. We kill the giant bag of bugles, and my thigh-high pit bull cosplayer finds a shard on the ground that has some serious Legend of Zelda vibes here because we get sucked into another cutscene where, well, inside our shroom trip, we meet the magic talking crystal Eidolin. 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 She tells me that the light lives within me and I must become what was already destined for me to be, a used car salesman. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. I'm supposed to become a warrior of light. Legendary warriors from old who stood up against the big bad during the calamity. I think I have that right. Well, I wake up from my trip to find out that I'm literally just laying on the ground and our cat lady is just waiting for me to rouse. She shows me a pirate dagger that was used to piss off the Oogie Boogie to go and attack us. She says more, some more tea and crimpet things and just runs away, but now we have to report back to Stale Worm of what happened. And basically he says, interesting, go yell at my workers who were just lounging around on their scheduled break. I mean, I really should honestly report this man to OSHA because people are required their 15 minute breaks here and there. Well, this one, Severin stole some oranges like gang playing from League of Legends so we have to go and emote on them and no that is not an exaggeration that is exactly what you have to do on this quest go slash doubt him this, this freaking game well actually he was stealing oranges because his henchmen got captured and he had to give these oranges to some goblins makes sense doing the wrong thing for the right reason well well I go and run a couple more errands and I inadvertently aggro an entire camp of pirates like level nine, like six of them. I think I'm doing well, but I'm getting my face kind of pushed in and somehow I aggro more of these. Galactic just sits on the sideline eating popcorn watching me die. Well, somehow because I attacked a pirate chasing me, I aggroed five random plant Pikmin people. Like what the hell, get off of me, mate. I mean, well, I die and then get rezzed and I get another level and get two abilities, overpower, which seems to be like my basic AOE and then defiance, which is, increases my enmity generation, which 
I was explained to as my character's threat level, how much threat I generate against a certain mob for tanking. Starting to piece together the whole tanking skill stuff, nice. Well, I go out with my cat girl to stop some more evil pirate shenanigans, and then I get back to the pirate captain at the Drowning Wench, who tells me all about the inn and what is available to the player. I hop up into my room, which is already nice that I already have like my own player housing, kind of. I have an item chest, a, a journal, which appears to run through the story of what I've already done. This is cool. This is all right up front. I've only been playing for about an hour. I heard there was player housing in this game, but honestly, my room to myself right off the bat is also pretty nice. It also appears that I can play whatever music I want if I've unlocked it. So that's actually pretty damn awesome. So I helped this lift operator collect some seedlings, which oddly enough are just randomly held by a pack of jackals. Like, do people really need that much help? They can't fight off a random dog. Also, Galactic gets abducted. <laughs> We get the swift perch and it turns out that the pirate city state only has like one functioning lighthouse which seems kind of like a massive oversight if you ask me well on my way to figure out the whole lighthouse won't burn bright thing i get attacked by another giant crab i fight for aggro against this other marauder who is tanking but the mustache wasn't enough of a distraction for it. well i get to setting down this brazier thing to light up a torch and somehow it spawns an angry flying pumpkin like <laughs> Where the hell did he come from? But well, we finished working at the lighthouse and we go check in with our girl at the Swift Perch and now I get to play the running simulator which has covered us the whole damn map. I I may be just complaining on my own bit here, I'm not gonna lie. I just, ugh, so much running. The Forge Master gives us the thumbs up and sends out a fixer to light the bad boy that we just had an issue with. But apparently there's some more trouble down at the dry docks which kind of sounds like should be docks that or wet. I get a new helm and some other gear and my character just I mean look at this this is just terrible I mean at least it matches I guess I, I've been, I've never been fashionable but damn this is hilarious this sash is killing me well I finally find a chocobo keeper and legit I don't I'm mad at myself that I didn't just hop on these bad boys and ride all over the place because it makes traveling a hell of a lot easier faster well I need to deliver a missive to anthrim anthrim anthr anthropologist at the dry docks, which I legit have no idea what I just said. I may have just said someone's name, or maybe I summoned a demon. I have no idea. Well, it turns out this guy is just building a big old ship, and the problem is, is that the ship needs skilled artisans, but they are missing a shipwright named Frilesmead. Frilsmead. <laughs> Fr Frilly boy. Did someone's cat like walk across the keyboard when they were writing down these names? <laughs> what the hell? Well, I have to go emote on Hal Brada, and he starts swearing on his nana and says that there might be something in the salt strands and go figure the only rock right outside of the town and here's our guide filigree literally just sitting here well he won't go back to work on the boat because he needs to ride a wrong he tried to get supplies in and out to a boat that's offshore but a storm came in and wrecked everything and now the cargo and all the important stuff is lined on the beach, but there are like some baddies guarding it, so he can't get too close. Well, not gonna lie, this is pretty cut and dry. This guy is not really to blame, but I mean, he doesn't know how to swing a sword? Come on now. So we go to collect materials all along the beach, and geez, like, dude, it's just some small mole creatures. You are one of the giant boys. You could easily, like, rip their necks off, but I recently got a new skill called Low Blow, which seems like it is a stun. Really fitting for the tank slot, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. We get the supplies and then have to RP walk all the way back to where the boats were, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting tired of a walking simulator. Well, I suppose this isn't too terrible, I guess. Aunt Jemima tells me that there are some angry pirates who want to destroy the victory which is the big boat that everyone's working on and i need to go and talk to someone called the storm captain which holy hell that's an awesome ass name like if that's a title like an official working title that's pretty cool well it seems that there are some evil pirates literally right around the corner like you can see them right where you were sitting they are within bow range and nobody thinks this is odd like i mean i'm not the only one who's saying this you can't judge a book by its cover but come on guys well i go and talk to the pirate and, and of course he gives me the old english muffin shakedown because i came and bothered him and his boys then he says that he doesn't even want to be here he's just hanging out to get his boy back and that they are definitely planning something again here though the with the deep v's in this game it, i know it makes you all fierce but they're showing a whole lot of chest without any chest hairs Anyway, his pals and him just storm off. Well, the storm captain is on high alert now. Like, na now you were? You you could literally see the pirates almost in earshot, and all you had to do is remove... Anyway, bad business. Well, now the pirates are definitely up to something. Literally, I saw a pirate right on top of the docks overlooking them. Like, the security here is horrendous. Y'all probably could have stopped this, but... 
Geez, everyone's afraid to, to do something about him. I get to the top of the castle where there's literally a pirate watching from there. Like he's not even hiding or crouching. He's just standing there like, ha, ha, you found me. Like, bitch, am I blind? It turns out when you are in a party and if your party members are not on the same quest, they can't see any specific quest related NPC or instance. So it really looks like you're just insane and talking to yourself. <laughs> Galactic's like, oh, is there someone here? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. That's pretty funny. Well, we get back to our storm captain and somehow the pirates got through the gates and they are trying to blow up the victory ship. Like, I am not one of those people who calls out shenanigans, but how did they sneak by like hundreds of guards? Like literally just walk up and see these assets just chilling here. How come nobody stabbed them or shot them with an arrow? Or better yet, why are your guards here so damn weak? Like do something about it, my dude. Well, I RP slice and dice through a couple of these mobs to find the angry pirate from before and spoiler reveal, it is the father of the shipwright who is working on the boat and he is an angry pirate and he's trying to get back at the whole Limsa Lumensa city state because his son left the pirating thing for the good pirates, I guess. Bear with me. Well, we roll up and the storm captain gives us the O-Face. Apparently, I need to RP duel this salty sea captain, but it's actually fairly easy. The shipwright is sad because now we are fighting against his dad. And this is all going fairly easy until these like lizard fish men run up and they're called Mamul Ja. Mamulja. I have no idea where these assets came from, but they were like six to seven levels ahead of me. So the storm captain runs in and is like, I will take the brunt of it. I'm like, honestly, good. Earn that damn title. I leave them to go kill the rest of these lackeys. Easy peasy. Then this absolute hulk of a dude is on the ground and his son standing over his dying body just to say some sentimental pirate shit before he dies. This is actually kind of sad because like right at the end of his life, he, he praises his son. Well, I come back out of my instance to finish up this quest to find Galactic doing some hilarious squats because you know what? Thick thighs save lives. I get the quest finished and now I need to head all the way back to Limsa Lominsa, but I remember the Chocobo. They basically run me all the way there for like 15 gil. That's that's such a relief. Well, I also need to get my class specific quest, which has me slaying three Galapagos turtles, but I need to go back to the Balderon boy again at the Drowning Wench to decipher a note that we found from killing the lizard men, I think. Oh wait, they, they're a fish. My mistake. It turns out that they weren't just trying to destroy the victory ship as payback. It was meant to be a giant distraction so they can literally body snatch people all over Linoska. Slamming in your windows, he's snatching your people up. Well, Balderon has us run to the Commodore, which is he looks like he's like about 15 with a captain's hat. And this note of a massive attack on Swift Perch, which is the place that we literally were just at. It's that little farmstead that was right next to the lighthouse. And we need to save it from a pirate gang called the Serpent Reavers. Okay, it's like someone named, named a high school football team after them, but... Okay, so now they want to send my wish version of Magic Mike to go defend Swift Perch. Here we go. So I'm here ready to defend Swift Perch with some of my Deep V Banana Bunch, and it's really just a few pirates, like five of them. Like, does nobody have a gun in this universe? But then I noticed that this guy is just wearing straight chaps. Like, this dude has leather in all the most uncomfortable places. He took thigh high way too far. It's just a banana hammock. That's all he's got. He's just got a banana hammock on and he's going to raid this town. I don't I don't want to be captured by him, guys. <laughs> Please. Well, the fight begins and we all charge out ready to fight these guys. This is another duty. So I sit back and have to do it all myself and let the guards take most of the damage. This goes very easy. Honestly, uh, I'm just wrecking everything. It really isn't an issue as the Pittsburgh Steelers are holding the O-line. It's actually a really ridiculous sentiment if you think about it. Like, I'm just trying to defend this town against some scantily clad pirates. <laughs> well, in the middle of this fight, this dude just straight up summons a demon like nobody's business. Like, he pulled it straight out of the banana hammock and was like, oh, here's my demon. <laughs> this battle is won, and the Yellow Jackets go to chase off the rest of the pirates, leaving me alone. My Marauder's spider sense is tingling, and he turns around to find a masked mage who causes the sky to grow dark and summons a massive demon out of the freaking ground like it's no issue like y'all i just went from fighting half nude pirates to fighting a literal dual wielding demon the worst part is is that this guy is like three times my height and he's only a lesser gargoyle well i actually clear him out pretty easily but initially i'm like what the hell is this now i move on to this angry black mage and here comes our twig wielding cat lady no. to save the day after like two minutes of slicing no problem he's dead y'all can't do this to me giant demons right after fighting some extra dancers from chippendales like what the hell is even this game well i find out that the cat lady's name is yasholta and i'm probably wrong on that and apparently the stash knows where she is from like a unique secret order banana bunch comes back only to find that there's nothing left but dead people and i leave the instance to find galactic doing more squats good lord that's going to be a hell of a quad workout after a quick walk back to report to the commodore i am treated like a hero with all these people excited to see me but then 
in walks this absolute giant of a lady admiral blow his win boss win boss uh, i'm i legit i almost said blow his wife good god how am i supposed to pronounce these names but it seems like this lady is the admiral of limsa luminsa she's excited to meet me because apparently she's been watching all the good that i've been doing kind of creepy this tank walks up and hands me nothing there's nothing he, he i get an item but there's nothing in his hands well she tells me that i'm invited to the banquet with everyone important from the city as a thank you for all these actions like this is this is absolutely hilarious like I'm, i've only been here in the city for like five minutes and they're like he's the coolest guy in the world <laughs> well i need to talk to balderon but apparently i need to look better than i do and i currently do which honestly i take as an offense because i'm doing my best after whatever quest gives me I, i'm broke as hell and balderon and gives me some fancy shoes like that's what qualifies me as fancy it isn't the skin tight chest armor nope it's the damn shoes that maketh the man well the guard won't even talk to me until i put these little fuckers on but he's like oh my gosh you're wearing shoes this is the best thing ever i got so mad i was like really like i like it don't even match the outfit and you're like yep fancy he's in then we get this beautifully voice acted cutscene. Except my man does not say a word like Legend of Zelda Link style. And all of a sudden my chest starts glowing. And everyone's like, yep, that's it. That's right. No problem. That's what he is. A vessel of light. Well, my mustache has an OCD trip. And apparently he's chosen. We get the original cutscene of the Warriors of Light battle. Or at least what I can guess it is. And it's retelling the final battle. And, and what our pale wolf lady, this magic forest lady, and this, this angry armored mad lad all did on that particular fight. It shows like we were getting our face pushed in. We had to fall back against an unwinnable fight but but whoever louis swa is and i i'm i'm so happy because he has such a badass name well i wake up from this fever dream in an inn apparently because i fainted at a party totally on par for me having too much coffee your heart can only beat so fast i have to go report to the admiral and explain myself which i guess i do pretty well because she wants me to go and meet the other two leaders who i saw in in the wet fever dream that i just had and asking us to reconvene to honor those who die that day which apparently happened five years ago okay not gonna lie I get boosted to hero status like way too fast. I've been here for maybe a day and now I'm like your favorite trusted advisor. The sash was actually meant to make people less trustful of me, but okay. Well, anyway, I fly on this airship now. Balderon is overly excited for me, but I walk onto this airship and it's just this giant flying ship and it's just me and the pilot. That's it. Like nobody else is there. There's not even any seats. Like what the hell am I supposed to do? Well, I get a cinematic and everyone's waving goodbye to me in the goofiest fashion. I mean, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing too, ma'am. I get a, a cutscene which apparently is a Darth Vader tribute band, and I get another cutscene where it seems like this massive dragon is fighting a fleet of airships, and it crashes and. It's somehow a part of this guy's empire. These guys have all sorts of technological magic kind of stuff at the same time, I guess. And it seems like during this cutscene, there's two engineers who are just having a chit chat and this absolute chat of a death knight walks up and slices one into oblivion. Maybe this dude was a spy? I don't, I don't know. But this dude is absolutely a villain. Then he puts on his dragon helm and dr then drops this cryptic line about magic. Garland, soon you will be made to know the true power of Magitech. Oh, it makes sense. I arrive in Gridania to go meet the Magic Forest Lady, Connie S S Sani. Connie. I'm just going to call her Connie, which is hilarious at this point because she is significantly shorter than everyone else. She's so tiny. <laughs> well, she signs the papers agreeing to honor those lost, and now I have to sprint to the airship again to get to Ulda, another singular, lonely Captain Boat Ride. Two grown men on a boat with no seats. Dreams really do come true. So just shut it. Well, I get to Olda to go talk to the angriest warrior in this game, who's honestly clearly just wearing a, a wife beater. You see it, it's just a white beater shirt. So I meet this dude. He agrees to meet and honor everyone, as well as his magic forest lady counterpart. No issue here. I head back to the pirate capital to visit the Hall of the Novice, and oh, hey, that's that's nice. That's me. I meet this guy named the Smith, which apparently I can train on specific dungeon-related things here. This is awesome because I can do these exercises and get some upgraded loot, while also learning some bits of the game and how I play into group role. Now, I'm fairly sure I know how to tank, but hey, if I got to listen to someone RP just to get some free gear, tell me all about it, big daddy. Well, after about 40 minutes of these trials, I nearly have a full set of brand new armor and upgrades, which actually look really, really good. It looks amazing. I enter my first dungeon called Sash... Tasha, Satasha, to hunt some pirates that are still terrorizing this area. Galactic joins in to heal me for encouragement or to push me as hard as I can go to pull a lot. All right, you got it, baby. We're doing it. Not gonna lie, I finally get into some group content and it's actually nice. 
I'm making some decent kills, getting some great experience amongst other things. Being Marauder, I, I am a tank, so I'm able to pull as much as I need to to get the job done. And I'm actually having a really good time here. Galactic scares me a few times with his healing, but no problem. Easy dungeon path to the end where we find some fish people who are killing the pirates because, well, they're fish people. Okay, straight up, let's go fight. In my leveling, I've also gotten an ability called Tomahawk, which throws an axe at my enemies at distance, but the animation for this is just hilarious because he just straight up heaves his axe while throwing it. This is this is great. Well, we burn the ball super duper fast and finish the first dungeon. I get a pair of goggles that make me more and more look like Dr. Robotnik, and I absolutely love it. The next main scenario quest takes me to Tam Tara Deepcroft, where I tank everything again, and I absolutely love this basically taking us through the core beginning dungeons as a part of the main story. This is neat because it encourages group play, and that's honestly what makes MMO so damn great. I get to the final boss, Galvin Nath the Dominator, and like legit, he looks like an extra from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> this is hilarious. Well, he melts super quick and is really no issue as a boss, and we finish this up. Cue the Go Team Super Pose. Balderon catapults us into a new dungeon in Copper Bell Mines, and here we go, third dungeon. I rush through, pulling everything that I can in this time, angrily overpowering groups of enemies, and then slamming everything with the set ability. Basically, I'm taking little damage. Uh, I mean, it, I also have a dedicated healer, so that I guess that helps. Well, we get down to the bottom of the mines to fight a giant hammer-wielding minotaur, easy peasy. And those are my first three dungeons that have finished up, and I think this is as good a time as any to talk about Final Fantasy XIV. So the opening adventure for Final Fantasy XIV, first and foremost, is a great story. I have heard tons and tons of talk about how good the story is in this game, and damn, they weren't lying. Personally, there's a lot more reading than I prefer, but it does follow up with a lot of good action sequences as well as fully acted cutscenes. Not all the time, but in the first two hours that I played the game, I spent most of it actually just reading when compared to actually fighting. So it took an adjustment on my end to understand what the game's focus is. Playing as a Marauder, it's actually a ton of fun, despite being a tank focus class. It does deal good damage and I don't have any issue clearing out anything in open world. And I like that he's a two-handed axe swinging badass as a tank and not your typical shield bearing warrior. The leveling process is really just a lot of running around, but sticking to the main scenario quest really does provide a ton of great experience. I over leveled my story quest by like five or six by the end of it. So I, I mean, it does make it strange when I have to take on uh, creatures in the open world, a part of the MSQ uh, where I feel like I'm really at a massive advantage. What's beautiful about the duty system in this game is that when you are level synced, you can fight specifically at the level that the story requires me to be. I can't just cruise in max level and destroy everything super quick. I am scaled down to what is appropriate. I like that the class skills are learned automatically without us having to go through any other trials or tribulations. Just hit the level and you are good to go with your new ability and your new skills. I do need to follow up on my Marauder quest line to get some of the more skills and experience, but, but how quickly I progress, this really shouldn't be an issue. I'm also looking forward to eventually evolving into a warrior and seeing where that takes me. Initially, the UI and the minimap were a bit janky, in my opinion, to look at and figure out. But again, this I tend to be a minimalist and I, I like things put directly in front of me when I'm trying to review them. I love the fact that the entire server and the main city were absolutely popping there were tons and tons of players just everywhere in this game and it shows to me as a new player that this is thriving and it and that bodes well for me and wants me to spend more time playing the game because i see so many people now to be sure i didn't spend hundreds of hours in this game thus far but i did get a good enough taste to know that i would like to continue and see where the game goes from here i want to figure out where the story evolves and how my marauder turns into the warrior i want to see the rest of the aftermath of the calamity and i want a damn flying mount I want a pig that flies, you know, I don't know. Now here, I am only on the free trial, which is an absolute blessing because I can play most of the game through most of the story without paying a single cent, which is really nice. I was made aware, however, that the second I drop money on this game, I am no longer on a free trial, so I'll have to pay attention to that. As a start for a free game, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. I don't know if I've laughed this hard playing a game in a very long time, which is something that I don't know if it was meant to be serious, but I'm enjoying myself, so... I, I will say that that's a plus. I have recently played through Lord of the Rings Online, and the new player experience has given me an unexpected journey. If you want to see the quest through Middle-earth, check this video out here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.